In this video, we're going to look at a another type of problem that involves uh, weak acid equilibria. <clears throat> and this is going to be an, an, an analogy to our type 2 problem uh, from chapter 14. And so let's see how this becomes a type 2 problem. So this thing says, determine the H3O plus concentration, pH, and degree of ionization. So in, in essence, we're determining the concentration at equilibrium given Ka, and we're given the concentration of HA, one of the reactants initial. So you can see how this is exactly a type a type two problem. We're determining an equilibrium concentration, and you know what? The pH and the degree, degree of ionization all come from that concentration of H three O plus and the concentration of A minus, which we're going to calculate. So really, those are not those don't change anything. They just add a couple of things to this that we have to do at the very end. But what we get though is we get a Ka and we get an initial concentration of the acid. So you can see how this is a direct replication of a type 2 problem. We're getting an equilibrium concentration from an initial concentration and the, uh, the K, or in this case, the Ka. So let's set it up as we normally would. Uh, so in this one, if we want to set this one up, the first thing we're always going to do is we're going to write, at, we're going to write out our reaction. So we get CH3COOH aqueous plus H2O liquid is an equilibrium with uh, CH3 COO minus aqueous plus um, H3O plus. Now, I have a feeling that at this point, probably you guys are thinking to yourselves, how does he know that that is the reaction? How does he know that that is the reaction? And I want to pause here and just take a second to explain this because I think it's important that you guys know where this comes from. And so the way that I know this is a reaction is because basically what we're doing is, is we're taking acetic acid, so we have water, and we're putting our acetic acid into it. So the, we have acetic acid, which is definitely an acid. We know that. We know that that's a weak acid, uh, mainly because we get a Ka for it. So that tells us that it's a weak acid. But, uh, I mean, you should know at this point that acetic acid is a weak acid. So then the next question is, is, well, what else is around? Are there any bases around? And the answer to that question is, yes, there is another base around, and that's the water that's present. The, other, the question that goes past that is, well, are there any other bases around? Is there anything else in the water that the CH3COOH might want to react with? And the answer to that question is no. All we have in the water is the acetic acid. So therefore, the only acid that we have is acetic acid. The only base that we have is water, and that's how I know how to write that equation. Okay, so that, that's what I want to point out at this stage, because it's important that you guys, you know, you guys have that in your mind. And then, so the next step always is to write out the Ka equation. So we're going to have H3O plus times the concentration of CH3COO minus over the concentration of CH3COOH. And so now we have our Ka set up and ready to go. And um, in this case, we get a value for Ka, which is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So if you want to plug that in at this point, you can do that. We'll do it later, but um, that's fine if you want to do it now. Okay, so the next thing to do is we go to our ice table. And our ice table, we're going to have our standard entries for our ice table. And again, it doesn't really matter what you put across the top or what order they're in. Um, it just matters that they're all there. And uh, so in this case, it says we're starting with 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid. So we're putting in the acetic acid at that concentration, and then we're letting it go to equilibrium and see what happens. So we, get, we start with 0.10 molar. Um, initially, we have none of this around because it hasn't gotten a chance to equilibrate yet. So we're going to do minus x, plus x, and plus x, and that comes from the stoichiometry. Don't think, just pull the stoichiometric coefficients from the reaction. Um, and then so at equilibrium, we're going to get 0 0.10 molar minus x, x, and x. Okay, so now we're all set up. So the next thing to do is we have our equilibrium concentrations as variables. We have our Ka. We're going to plug in. So we get 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to x squared. So what I did was I plugged in an x here and an x here. So that becomes x squared over... 0 0.10 molar minus x. And so we're ready to go. We're ready to solve this. And you're probably looking at yourself going, oh, man, I got to do a quadratic. 
And technically, you would be right. Technically, this requires a quadratic to solve it. You can't just take a square root um, from this and solve it uh, the way it's written here, because uh, the bottom is not squared also. So this would require a full-blown quadratic. However, this is something really, really important that we're going to be using quite a bit over the next several examples. Uh, and this is the idea that we can, deter we can potentially get rid of this x down here and make our lives easier. So can we eliminate this x by approximation? And you're probably thinking to yourself, how can you, how could you do that? How could you eliminate an x? I mean, that's going to give you the wrong answer. And technically, you're right. If you were to, this, doing this process of approximation is going to give you a slightly incorrect answer. However, what we're going to discover is that that slight error that's introduced is so small that beyond, within the sig figs of, of, our, um, of our answers, it's actually going to be so small that you, wouldn't, you don't even detect it within the significant figures. So now the question is, is how do we decide if we can eliminate that x? What is going on and, and how can we make a decision as to whether or not that x is too small? So think about it this way. If this thing is breaking up in solution, right? We're, we're making uh, acetate and we're making H3O plus. Now the whole idea here is that these things don't break up that much. These things break up just a very little bit. So if, if this thing breaks up just, a, if this thing doesn't break up that much, then really, let's say that we had one molar, or let's say we have 0 0.1 molar of this. And when th let's say that at equilibrium, this thing breaks up to give us 0 0.0001 molar A minus. That means that when we do 0 0.1 molar minus X, our, and our X is this something very, very, very small like this, we're going to get 0 0.1 molar minus 0 0.0001 molar. This is going to give us 0.9999 molar which is basically the same thing by rounding and significant figures as 0.1 molar. So this is the approximation that we're getting at. What we're getting at is that this X is so small um, because the acid is relatively weak that we can actually eliminate it within significant figures and, get, and, and still get the same, basically the same answer. And so that, that's what we're checking. So now the question is, is, well, how can we check that? And so the way that we check is we take the concentration of the acid we divide it by the Ka, and we check to see if this division is, is greater than 100. So what this is basically saying is if Ka is small enough, is so small that the concentration of, that the concentration of acid divided by the Ka gives a number greater than 100, that means that this value of x is going to be about 1% or less of the value of, point, of, of the 0.1 molar. So if this is true, if the concentration of acid divided by the Ka is greater than 100, meaning that um, the, the Ka is so small that we get a value of less than 1%, then we can eliminate this x and, 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 do, and simplify things. So let's check that in this case. So our approximation in this case, we're going to take our 0 0.10 molar, which is our concentration of the acid. Uh, and this is the, this is the initial concentration of the acid. It's just a basic check. And we're going to divide this by 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. And what you're going to see is that this is much, much greater than 100. This is going to be around 10,000. Um, and that's, that's a huge number. So what that tells you is that this is going to break up so little that the 0.1 molar is going to be so much bigger than the x that the x is going to be inconsequential. So when this is true, if this is true, then what we can do is we can simplify and actually get rid of our x. And then the solution, then the then it becomes a simple um, algebraic uh, question. We move the 0.1 molar up. We take 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0.1 molar, and then we take the square root of it. So the value of x we get from that is 0 0.0013 molar. Uh, and that's when you take the 0.1 molar times the 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, and then you take the square root. Now, what I did was I went ahead and I actually solved it as a quadratic equation. So I actually did the full-blown quadratic equation, and this is what I got from my roots from the full-blown quadratic equation solution. So this is x approximation, 
and from the roots from the calculator that you get, you get x is equal to 0 0.001295 is the one that you would get from the actual quadratic. And so you can see within the significant figures, our significant figures here are two. Because this was so small, this will round out to 130 even after not just the second place, but the, the not just to the second place of the nine, but also to the five that comes after it. So you can see that this approximation is actually quite good and does give us the correct answer when our approximation holds true. Okay, so now at this point we can get our equilibrium concentration. So um, x, our concent our x is equal to our concentration of H3O plus, which is equal to our concentration of A minus, and so this is going to equal 0 0.0013 molar. Our concentration of HA at equilibrium is going to equal 0 0.10 molar minus 0 0.0013 molar. And here's what I was talking about before, where I said that this is going to be so small. So when you actually uh, when you actually do the subtraction of the these two things, we're going to get 0 0.0987 molar for the concentration of HA at equilibrium, which will round out to 0 0.10 molar by significant figures. So when you round this out, you're going to get 0 0.099, which is 99, almost 99 percent of the original value. Um, so. In essence, uh, you can see that this effect is very, very, very tiny on the co initial concentration of the HA. And so what the question asks us for is the pH and degree of ionization. So the pH in this case is going to equal the negative log of the 0 0.0013 molar, and that is going to equal 2.89. And the percent ionization is going to equal the 0 0.0013 molar divided by the initial concentration of 0 0.10 molar times 100, and that's going to equal 1.33%. So a very, very small percent ionization there as well. So this shows you one example of a type 2 problem that does not require the quadratic because of that approximation.